Serotonin plays a vital role in regulating your mood and overall well-being. To produce it naturally, our body needs certain nutrients and cofactors that are often lacking in low serotonin, depression and related conditions. So let's go over them, talk about how exactly serotonin is made and what you can do to boost it naturally. Before that, let me quickly recap what serotonin actually is. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter, meaning it helps send messages between nerve cells in the brain and body. Serotonin is often called the happy chemical since it contributes to feelings of well-being and happiness. While we know today that depression doesn't necessarily need a serotonin deficiency and that the processes behind it are more complex, serotonin is still a key player in feeling content and being emotionally stable. As a neurotransmitter, it has different functions in the body. For example, it acts as a chemical messenger, making sure that specific parts of the brain and body communicate with each other. Beyond mood, serotonin also plays a role in maintaining a healthy sleep-wake cycle by influencing the production of melatonin, the sleep hormone. This is why boosting serotonin can also improve sleep quality. And then serotonin also helps regulate digestion, as most of the body's serotonin is actually found in the gut. It controls bowel movements and the function of the digestive system. Okay, how exactly is serotonin made? About 90% of it is found in the cells lining your gastrointestinal tract, with only about 10% being produced in your brain. To understand how we can boost serotonin naturally, we need to understand the pathway it takes in your body. The process begins when you eat a protein-rich food. These foods contain amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. During digestion, proteins are broken down in the stomach and small intestine into individual amino acids, one of which is tryptophan. Tryptophan is essential because the body cannot produce it on its own. It must be obtained from your food. Tryptophan is then taken by your body and converted into 5-hydroxytryptophan or 5-HTP. 5-HTP is then converted into the final form serotonin, also known as 5-hydroxytryptamine or 5-HT. Optionally, serotonin can also be further converted into melatonin, like I said before. When we want to increase serotonin naturally through foods or supplements, we have two options. One, we can increase the building blocks your body has available to form serotonin. Unfortunately, you cannot take a serotonin supplement directly. It wouldn't get absorbed and pass through the blood-brain barrier intact. So you have to rely on serotonin precursors and cofactors that are involved in the production of it in your body. Or the other option is that we can influence how serotonin is used up by your body. This is done by influencing serotonin reuptake, so how much of the neurotransmitter is reabsorbed into neurons and therefore no longer available to us. This is usually the role of antidepressants, which you should discuss with your doctor, of course, but there are also dietary strategies to support this naturally. So let's go through both strategies and explain the key nutrients involved. First, the serotonin precursor and cofactor strategy. Obviously, you can supplement tryptophan, which is the starting point for serotonin production. The problem is that tryptophan can also be used to make other nutrients like vitamin B3 niacin. Because of this, and because it is two steps removed from serotonin, tryptophan is usually not the best precursor to take. Instead, 5-HTP is a more direct precursor since it bypasses the initial conversion step from tryptophan. It can help increase serotonin levels more quickly and more effectively than tryptophan itself. But you can try out both. Some people react better to one or the other. An interesting side note, 5-HTP supplements are typically made from the seeds of a plant called Griffonia simplicifolia, which is native to West and Central Africa. Vitamin B6 is also critical for serotonin production because it is involved in converting 5-HTP into serotonin. Without sufficient B6, even high levels of tryptophan or 5-HTP may not result in optimal serotonin production. The most important thing to know here is that you actually need vitamin B6 
in its bioactive form P5P. Normally, the body can convert normal B6 into P5P, but in some people, this doesn't work properly. For example, those with pyroluria. So they need to take B6 in its preform P5P version. Another key player is magnesium, which also plays a supportive role in serotonin production by improving enzyme function and maintaining neurotransmitter balance. It also helps calm down the nervous system, it reduces stress and it relaxes muscles, all of which indirectly support serotonin levels. Low magnesium levels will impair your serotonin production and magnesium deficiency is so widespread that chances are very high you need to supplement. When we talk about magnesium, we also need to talk about zinc. It is another key player in neurotransmitter regulation and it supports the enzyme involved in serotonin production. Just like magnesium, low zinc levels will impair your body's ability to synthesize serotonin correctly. That's why zinc supplements are almost always a staple in nutrition programs optimized for mental health. And lastly, I also want to talk about vitamin D. It is crucial for serotonin production because it activates a gene that produces the enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase, responsible for converting tryptophan to 5-HTP. Low vitamin D levels are linked to mood disorders and decreased serotonin production. I'm generally a fan of getting most of your vitamin D through sunlight, but this is discussed in a different video where I also go over supplementation. Great, now that we talked about precursors and cofactors, what about the second strategy? So minimizing serotonin reuptake. This is where methylation comes into play. Methylation describes the addition of a methyl group, which is a small molecule made up of one carbon and three hydrogen atoms. These methyl groups need to be added to other molecules in the body, like neurotransmitters, hormones, or even your DNA. What often happens in low serotonin depression is that the genes responsible for serotonin reuptake are overactive. So even if you produce more serotonin, it just gets reabsorbed by the neurons and therefore is active for less time. These people are called undermethylators because their bodies don't produce enough methyl groups which are crucial for silencing these overactive genes. Alongside serotonin, undermethylators also tend to have low levels of other neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine or noradrenaline. This neurotransmitter deficiency could then lead to feeling emotionally dull, having a lack of motivation, and difficulty managing stress. Undermethylators also experience a wide range of other common symptoms like perfectionism, high anxiety, frequent allergies, and high histamine and sometimes high estrogen, because both are broken down through enzymes related to methylation. Bringing their methylation up is often a long-term endeavor and it can take several months, sometimes even longer. You do that through methyl donor supplements like methionine, SAMe, which is the more active form of methionine, or TMG, trimethylglycine. There are also others out there, so this is just a list of examples. Supplements like creatine that reduce your body's need to use methyl groups are also helpful for undermethylators. But you want to be careful with methylfolate, which is often recommended for undermethylators. It is actually both a methyl donor and a methyl reducer. So in some people, the net effect is negative. It often helps in the first few weeks, and then the person crashes. This is also explained in more detail in a different video of mine. Great, now that you have a better understanding of how serotonin works and what nutrients influence it, you also have a better idea how to increase it naturally. Obviously, none of this is medical advice, and if you suffer from depression, always consult a specialized doctor. All these measures are lifestyle measures that can only complement the proper medical treatment. From my own experience, I can say that once you understand how your body works and how neurotransmitters are actually made, there is a lot you can achieve through your diet and supplements. Nutritional psychiatry is a crazy rabbit hole where once you dive in, you will be surprised by all the research that has been done on nutrients and diet protocols to improve mental illness. We do actually have a very good understanding of how vitamins, minerals, and amino acids affect your brain and nervous system. 
The difficult part is just seeing through the vast amount of research and not missing the forest for the trees. I do my best to explain everything for beginners on my channel, so make sure to check out my other videos if you're interested.